A very good morning to all of you. Uh, we warmly welcome you to Calvary Center uh, online service. Uh, thank you for joining. Um, as we uh, move into a time of worship, let's just commit this time into Lord's hands and pray that God will speak to us. Uh, let's just commit uh, all of us, wherever we are, um, into God's hands through uh, a prayer. Commit ourselves and pray that you know God will uh, talk to us, uh, help us and guide us throughout. Heavenly Father, I want to say thank you, Father Lord, for everything, Father Lord. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for each and every person who is listening to this online right now, Father Lord. I pray that whatever they are going through, Father Lord, whatever the answers that they need, Father Lord, you will provide, Father Lord. Father Lord, as they uh, move into a time of worship online, Father Lord, I pray you will speak to them, Father Lord. I pray you will guide them and bless them, Father Lord. Now I commit each and every person into your loving hands. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.
down on my knees again, surrendering all, surrendering all. Drench my soul as mercy and grace unfold. Speak to me now. Speak to me now. I surrender. Drench my soul, drench my soul as mercy and grace unfold. A hunger and thirst, a hunger and thirst. Find me here, Lord, as you draw.
surrender. I surrender. I surrender. Church, just surrender it all to Him this morning. Just surrender your thoughts to Him this morning. He just wants you just as you are. Just surrender yourselves. Lord, we just surrender ourselves, Lord, to you. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus
you, Father Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, hope you guys had an amazing time of worship. Uh, now I would like to invite uh, Reverend Seneca de Silva, uh, who will be sharing the word. He is one of our very own senior pastors in Calvary Center. Very good. Welcome to all of you. We just want to listen to God's word and to meditate upon God's word as we come before his holy presence. And I believe that when we always come to God's word and seek God's voice, he does speak to us. He speaks to us in mysterious ways. He speaks to us very clearly. He speaks to us uh, and he ministers to our need. Today, I just want to focus very specially on a very important aspect uh, from God's word. Uh, the emphasis of this message is the love of the Father. The love of the Father is something that uh, we sometimes wonder about because uh, uh, many things are said about various other people. But when it comes to fathers, it's always about the love of the Father. Sometimes it is very hard to understand the love of the Father because uh, it is so special. When you talk about fathers in the Bible, you find that there are various ways in the word that it has been uh, described, it has been applied in various ways. Fathers uh, sometimes means people who are the head of a generation. Fathers also mean uh, people who are spiritual leaders in a community. Fathers are also those who have a right over their children, who have uh, inheritance of their own that they pass on to their children and to their generation. Uh, head of a generation is a very special father in the Bible. Uh, also, we talk about the word father in the Bible. We read about it where the father is uh, a spiritual authority in someone's life. Someone would uh, refer to a person as a father who has spiritual authority over them. And uh, in similar ways, uh, the word father is applied in in different other contexts as well. But today we specially talk about the father and his love. The love of the father is so special because if you look at it, you will see that uh, the love of the father sometimes cannot be properly understood as well. If you look at the scriptures, once again, you see there are two specific expressions of the love of the father, the heavenly father. And that is the first one is where you find Christ being sent to this world as a result of the love of the Father in heaven. God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son uh, so that those who would believe in Christ will not perish but have everlasting life. That is one example. The second example is a very well-known story that Jesus himself related in the son of the prodigal, in the story of the prodigal son. The story of the prodigal son refers to the father heart of God. If you look at that story, it's not just about an earthly parent who was concerned about his wayward son. It is also about the revelation of who our heavenly father is. The very heart of the father in heaven is revealed to us through that parable. So this morning, we want to specially focus on the heart of the father, which is the love aspect of God's father, God the Father and his love heart. The prodigal son's story is well-known story to us. In light of the story of the prodigal son, you will see that uh, there are various applications being made. But if you look at the story carefully enough, you will see that the story is not really about the prodigal son alone. It is about the father heart and how large and how big the father heart of God is. And we are challenged this morning to look at the father heart of God. We are challenged to look at the father heart of God and draw out of that same love into our own lives. Fathers, if you are listening to me today, you will also realize that God has wired you in a particular way so that you can love your children and those around you with that unconditional love, the love of the Father in heaven. You have been wired that way. Uh, I'm sorry, mothers, uh, that is not your part of, the, uh, part of the responsibility, but 
uh, you too can experience the love of the Father. The love of the Father is unconditional. It is not limited to any particular person. The love of the Father is always reaching out without boundaries, and sometimes we cannot fully understand it. Uh, you will see that the love of the Father, the Heavenly Father, is inviting us today. He's inviting us to experience the transforming power of His love. The transforming power of His love will totally change us and help us to be people who have been touched by God's love and likewise touch others with the same kind of love. And that is why it is important to look at this parable of the wayward or the prodigal son and, and see not just the waywardness of the prodigal son, but see the father heart of God. See how God reaches out to us. Some of us today are, are suffering with this whole concept of father because some of us have been uh, so wronged by our fathers. Our fathers have sometimes not been so good to us. They have uh, sometimes uh, done so many things that have hurt us so bad. We have had many examples of uh, fathers who have never set a good example to us. So maybe if you are listening to this message, you are thinking, what father are you talking about? Because the father whom I knew was not so much of a loving father. If he had loved me, then I would have not been in this state today. But I have good news for you because uh, that is just the earthly father whom you came in contact with. That is the earthly father whom you uh, have had an experience with. And that is far different from the father in heaven. In 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1, it says, See what the great love of the father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. In another translation, in the New, uh, new Living Translation, it says, See how very much our Father loves us, for He calls us His children, and that is what we are. But the people who belong to this world don't recognize what we are, God's children, because they don't know Him. So this is a very special revelation about the love of the Father in heaven. He has lavished his love upon us. And that is the very reason, even though we have had a bad experience with our own fathers, we can still draw out of the heavenly father's love and we can be touched today. At the end of this message, I would like to pray for those who have had such experiences, those who have been so hurt and those who have been so broken and your lives transformed and changed because of those bad experiences that you have had in your family. The Lord wants to heal those wounds today and he wants to minister to us and he wants to give you a fresh outpouring of his love so that you will experience his love in a very special way. And you will see that that love is far more different and it is far more unconditional than the love that you experience from your earthly father. Let is, let's dive into this story. Our heavenly father invites us to experience the transforming power of his love. And we would wonder what is the nature of this transformative love? What is the nature of this transformative love? Let's get into this story, the parable of the, uh, of the lost son. We see that the son uh, went on his own way. He asked for his share of the inheritance from his father. The father did not question him for anything. He gave him his share of the inheritance and the son, the Bible says, go into a faraway land and he uh, lives a life of carelessness and he squanders the wealth of his father, his inheritance. It comes to a time that there is a famine in the land and uh, he also feels the pinch and he has finished everything that he had in his hand and now uh, he is hungry and looking for food. When he is looking for food, he has only one place to go and look for an employment, and that is to take care of pigs. In the pig's sty, he would see the pigs eat of those kinds of food that had been thrown into them, but he longs to even eat the food of the pigs, and he is still wondering, why did I fall into this condition? Because in my father's house, there have been so much of food and I enjoyed that life there, 
what happened to me and sense comes into his heart and he returns back to go back home to the father's house so that at least there will be something, some mercy left for him in the heart of his father. In expectation, he says, I will go to my father. I will ask him for pardon. I will ask him to not just consider me as a son because I'm not fit to be a son, but rather I will ask him to accept me as just a slave so that at least I can be fed. I can have my meals day in and day out and at least I can survive. So he goes back to his father. The Bible describes of the nature of what this transformative love is. The transformative love of the heavenly father is illustrated through this earthly man, this man, this wealthy man who had already lost his son. His eldest was living with him and what is the nature of this transformative love? Firstly, the nature of this transformative love is of selflessness. The love of the Father is selfless. The love of the Father is selfless. And I just want us fathers who are listening to me today, if you really want to be in a true sense, a true father, your love should be a selfless love. And if you have not experienced that, others, it is time now to experience the selfless love of the father. This father was waiting, anticipating the return of his prodigal son. Probably he was always fixed, he has fixed his eyes on the road far away to see if his son is returning back home. And he sees his son. And the Bible says that the father ran up to the son, went running up to the son. He did not wait till the son comes to the home, but he instead runs and meets him right on the way. And that tells us that this man is a selfless man. He had possibility to lift up his clothing, which was a long cloth, a cloak that they wore, and he had to run with much difficulty. He had to run despite of what other people said about his wayward son. Despite of the shame and uh, the loss of his reputation, he decided to run to his son. Despite of the fact that this son was already working in a pigsty and that he was unhygienically uh, groomed still, the father decided to run to his son. He was ceremonially unclean as well because as you know, the Jewish people, uh, for them, uh, the pig is an unclean animal. They have nothing to do with such creatures. They become ceremonially unclean, but the father runs to his son. That shows how selfless this father is. And that is exactly how our heavenly father is. He is a selfless person. He runs and not only just welcomes the son, he throws his arms around his son, embraces him and says, welcome, before even the son has much explanation to do. And he says, I have sinned against you, I have sinned against heaven, and please accept me just as a slave in your house. He has nothing to say about it. He simply embraces him and says, my son was lost and now he's found and it is time now to celebrate. That is the heavenly father. And I can just imagine our response to a son like that. Many people today will never identify with this father. Instead, they will respond in different ways. I can just imagine they, back then, many, many hundreds of years ago, how people in society would have accepted or rather responded to a child who was in this state, who had squandered their wealth and they have uh, disregarded and uh, they have brought so much of disrepute to their name, to their good name. What would be the response? I can just imagine. The first thing is a thundering slap. Slap, slap. And then would say, have you no shame? 
Where have you been all this time? You scoundrel. You have just destroyed my wealth, my hard-earned money. You have destroyed it. You have wasted everything. Look at your life. How, what has become of you? Do you think you have anything more left with me that you came back to receive? I have nothing to give you. In fact, I don't even consider you a son. Get lost because I don't have anything to give you. Neither do I want to accept you because you have caused much trouble and you have, you have actually uh, disregarded my reputation in society. Get lost would be the response. I know of parents, of fathers, because of the state of their dignity, some fathers have disowned their children. And in some cultures, they even give arms in the name of the dead. And they say that my child is dead. I consider him dead. And I give arms to the poor in the name of my dead son or dead child. Because it hurt their dignity so bad that they do not have anything to do with a wayward child. But not this father. This father is much different. This father waited in anticipation. He waited so long. And Luke chapter 15 and verse 20 says, But while his son was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, kissed him. This son of mine was dead and he is alive again. He was lost and he is found. That is the love of our Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father is waiting to receive us. He is waiting to receive us for a long time. Probably you are listening to this message and you have been in your own wayward journey as well. Probably you have squandered the wealth of your parents. Probably you have brought a bad reputation upon yourself and your parents and your family. And you have gone into such a lifestyle that you think that there is no turning back. But this morning, I have good news for you. And that good news is that you can still come back. The only thing that you need is a touch from the Heavenly Father. The only thing that you need is an embrace from your Heavenly Father. Because the Bible says that He knows who we are. In Psalms chapter 103, verse 8 to 10, it says, the Lord is compassionate and merciful, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. He will not constantly accuse us, nor remain angry forever. He does not punish us for all our sins. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. Because for one very specific reason. Many of our earthly fathers do not want to accept their wayward child because of their self, because of their name, because of their dignity. But our heavenly father does not care about his dignity. If he is to accept us back into his bosom, he will not care about his dignity. He will reach out to us wherever we are. And that love is called agape love. Agape love of the Father is the source of all love. And agape love is a self-sacrificing love. It gives of your own self to the extent that there is nothing left because that is how much God loves us. Today, I just want to challenge you that it's not too late. If you're hearing these words, it's not too late because the Father in heaven still loves you. Maybe your physical, biological father may still have problems with you, but not our Heavenly Father. If you are willing to come back and seek His love, He's willing to throw His arms around us and accept us and embrace us and help us to experience that selfless love, the agape love, the self-sacrificing, self-giving love. So what? is the nature of this love. Firstly, 
it is a selfless love. Secondly, the love of the Father is a reckless love. The love of the Father is a reckless love. If you look at this story once again, you will see that uh, the actions of this father displays a lot of recklessness in terms of accepting his wayward son. Fathers are usually quite reckless. Fathers today are biological fathers, our worldly fathers are reckless uh, for the bad things. They are reckless drivers sometimes. They make reckless decisions. Some fathers have reckless relationships. Some, their behavior is so reckless. You know, there are, I can go down the line, there are many areas of recklessness in our earthly fathers. But our heavenly father's recklessness is much different. What's the word reckless mean? The reckless love of God means he's willing to spend until he has nothing left. He's willing to spend until he has nothing left. There's another word being used in Christian circles, in Christian songs that says recklessly extravagant. The love of the Father in heaven is recklessly extravagant. It means that it'll, he's willing to go beyond the normal limit. Go to the extent that you cannot even imagine in discharging his love towards those who deserve it, who do not deserve it, in fact. You know, reckless love uh, is something that we never understand as human beings. You know, we have to experience that love for us to recognize and understand it. Look at this father and see how he responded. Luke chapter 15 and verse 4 says, Suppose one of you had a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? The story of the prodigal son is also coupled with two other stories in this chapter. It is coupled with the story of the lost coin and the lost sheep. In this verse that we read, it is referring to the lost sheep. Again, referring to the love of the Father, the Father in heaven. And it tells us that the Father in heaven is so reckless that he will leave the 99 sheep in the open country and go in search of that one lost sheep. That is quite a reckless thing, to leave 99 just for one. And that is exactly the demonstration of God's love to us. He's willing to leave anything else if he has to reach out to us. If you are hearing me today and you are in that place of lostness, you have lost your way. You have lost your way, you were once in the fold, but now you have lost your way. You have gone away so far away and you cannot find your way back. You cannot think of how to find your way back. I just want you to know that the Lord, he will reach out to you wherever you are. It doesn't matter where you are because he will reach out to you. The Bible very clearly tells us that the love of the Father is so very different. In the story, you come across two sons. It's not about just one son, although the heading says prodigal son the parable of the prodigal son, it introduces two sons to us. And I believe also at the same time that Jesus is referring to some people who represent, who are represented in these two sons. Those people who are listening to Jesus in, the, in his audience, in his original audience. There were people who were the tax collectors and sinners. The tax collectors and sinners, Jesus was actually dining with them. He, he, he had given him, given them his attention. And there were the Pharisees and the teachers of the law 
who was so displeased about this fact that Jesus is spending more time with the tax collectors and the sinners. And these Pharisees and the teachers of the law, they came with criticism against Jesus. So you'll see that Jesus is addressing both of these groups at the same time. He's on one hand referring to the prodigal son. He's talking about those who have been lost like the tax collectors and the sinners. And on the other hand, he's talking about the eldest son who was at home, referring to the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. The younger son had lost everything. He has been living in self-gratification. He displayed serious rebellion. His acts were, acts were worthy of disowning, to be disowned by the parent, by the father. He squandered the father's hard-owned wealth, which also is a terrible crime. He was also ceremonially unclean because he was feeding the pigs and was in the pig sty. And that, in a kind of way, represented the tax collectors and the sinners, the general understanding of tax collectors and sinners. On the other hand, the eldest son, they are the people who love to serve. They are the people who were concerned about the very little details. They basically were self-righteous. They thought that they were obedient children in the house of their father. But look at the elder son in this story. The elder son in this story, just like his younger brother, actually he shames his father before others. He says, how come you accept this wayward son of yours? How come you throw a party for him? Whereas I was with you all this time. I was so faithful for you. I worked for you. I slaved for you. And you never ever gave me one lamb to party with my friends. And he goes on, goes on and on in public while others are listening. And he brings so much of disgrace to his father. He insults his father before others, which is a grave sin in those standards of the Jewish community as well. He deserves to be disinherited. He deserves to be disciplined for his actions, for his words, for his attitude. And that is exactly how the teachers of the law and the Pharisees were. But instead, the father tries to convince him to come in and to join the party. He says, don't think that way because you have to think about your brother who has come back and it is time now to celebrate. That is how reckless the heavenly father is. You know, if we are to think about the things that each and every one of us have done, we, there is none of us that is worthy of the mercy and the love of our heavenly father. None of us are entitled to anything if our wrongdoing has been taken into account. Many times, we Christians, we forget this. We are quick to judge. We are quick to point our finger. We are quick to pass on judgment and cast off people from fellowship. Not realizing that we too could have been cast away in that same manner if not for the love of the Heavenly Father that forgave us. We don't fully realize the recklessness of God's love that He reached out to us, such pitiful people. People who are so bad sometimes. And we received His mercy. And that is why we can now celebrate in His presence. Let us not point our finger at others. Let us not cast off others. 
because the very same love and mercy that we have experienced, the same reckless love of the Father in heaven, reaches out to those who are in need, those who are wavered, those who have decided to come back and respond to that love. And we should make way and we should join the celebration like that Father invited. We must join the celebration and give thanks to God for His love, for reaching out to us despite of who we are and what we have done. This is what the Bible says, Romans chapter 5, verse 6 to 8. Just at the right time, Christ died for ungodly people. He died for us when we had no power of our own. It is unusual for anyone to die for a godly person. Maybe someone would be willing to die for a good person. But here is how God has shown his love for us. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Christ died for us while we were still sinners and people without hope. And that is the very reason we can celebrate today. Because the love of the Father is so reckless. Fathers, I want to challenge you. Be reckless in your love. Be reckless in your love towards your children. Be reckless to the fact that you are willing to go any distance to spend anything that you have to spend just to reach out with the love of your heart that has been received from the Heavenly Father. You know, that is the challenge before us today. And those of you who have gone so far and cannot find your way back, I just want to give you good news. And that good news is that the Heavenly Father is reaching out to you. And that is the very reason you are listening to these words. And the reason is that He wants to reach out to you. He wants to touch you with His love, with that reckless love, where He will not remember our wrongdoing, but He will have mercy on us. Not punish us for what we have done, but rather demonstrate His love in very practical ways. So what is the nature of this unconditional love of the Father in heaven? Firstly, it is a selfless love. The love of the Father is selfless. Secondly, the love of the Father is reckless. And thirdly, the love of the Father restores. The love of the Father restores. When the Father in this story restores his younger son back into son sonship, into fellowship in the family, he does not consult anyone. He does not inform anyone. He does not do anything else, but rather he immediately reconciles the son back into the family. This is what Psalm says, Psalm 103, verse 12 and 14. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. You don't have to tell God who you are. Because he knows that you and I, we are dust. He knows. He knows our condition. But there's an expression used here. It says, as far as the east is from the west. That is how far he has removed our transgressions from us. And that is the extent to which he goes to restore us back into fellowship with him, to restore us back into the family and to give us the privileges of a son. In the story, the father did few things to restore back the son into the family. Immediately, almost immediately, without wasting his words, without wasting his energy. In the story, it tells us that the father immediately took certain steps to restore this lost and found son back into his family, back into his bosom as a son. The first thing is, he said, bring the best robe in the house. The best robe in the house belonged to the father. In other words, the father is saying, there's nothing between you and me. 
the very best of me, I'm giving it to you. Secondly, he says, bring the ring and put a ring on him. The ring is a reinstatement of sonship. Putting a ring on his finger was a reinstatement of his position as a son in the family, in the house. Thirdly, he says, put on the sandals. In those biblical times, this man especially was a wealthy man. He had others who worked for him. There were slaves that worked under him. Slaves never wore sandals. That was the sign of a slave and a son. It is the son who wore the sandals. So in fact, the father is saying, I accept you only as a son and not as a slave. Can you see the power of his restoration? I accept you only as a son and not as a slave. That's the difference. And he does something even greater. He says, slaughter the fattened calf. We are going to have a party. We are going to have a party tonight because my son was once lost and now he has been found and we have a reason to celebrate. Fathers, I just want to remind you that, that, that this world is fa failing and falling apart because of this vital element that our earthly fathers have failed to do. We have failed to restore our families. We have failed to restore our relationships. We have fallen off in our relationships. But I want you to know, fathers, that the power of restoring things back into fellowship is the power that has been given into your hands. If you restore back into fellowship and into the family, you know, the very transforming power of the Heavenly Father will flow through you into your family. And that is what God wants you to know today that you hold the authority to restore. No one else has the authority to restore. It is you fathers that have the authority to restore back your families that have sometimes even fallen apart. And sometimes children who have gone astray in your own family, never think of cutting them off, but seek to restore them back into fellowship. You should need the child and you should restore them into their proper place in the family. And also you must restore your family in alignment with God's grace and favor. You must restore your family in alignment with God's grace and favor. That responsibility lies upon us earthly fathers. And uh, that is why we hear this story today. The Heavenly Father restores back into fellowship. Likewise, some of you might have uh, thought that you don't belong to the family of God either because you have gone astray so much. But the Lord says, no, I want you to come back into the family and be my son, my daughter. This is what Galatians chapter 4 and verse 7 says. So you aren't a slave any longer. You are God's child. Because you are his child, God gives you the right of those who are his children. God gives you the right of those who are his children. You know, God seeks to rest restore, and so do we. Should, we should seek to restore. Sometimes we live in the house but we live as slaves. Just like this eldest son. We live in the house. We are supposed to be a son, but we live like a slave. We are very good Christians in church. We appear to be Christians in church, but we still have the mentality of a slave. That is exactly what this eldest son was. It reminds me of my own son. My son, uh, basically, he, 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 
you know, has fully understood what sonship is. He just walks up to my Almera, he opens it, takes my shirt, he wears it, and I say, hey, that's my shirt. He just grins at me and he just walks away. Because he believes what belongs to my father belongs to me. One day I found that he had taken my hard drive. My hard drive, I had a lot of information, a lot of my documents in it. And I found that he has already, all of a sudden he had taken my hard drive and he is just using it. His stuff is in it. He has got rid of my stuff. Because what belongs to the father belongs to me was his belief. When I'm in a very serious meeting in, a, in my office, he will just barge in because he is the son. He doesn't need to get permission. You know, many times we, we call ourselves children of God, but we live like slaves. We live like slaves. That is exactly what this eldest son was. Look at his words. He says, I slaved for you all this while. The father didn't want his eldest son to slave for him because there were slaves in the house. The father wanted the eldest son to be a son. And that is what some of us are. We live like slaves and no wonder we are not happy in the house of the Lord. But in the house of the Lord, we are all sons. We are no longer a slave, but we are God's children, God's son, God's daughter. Because you are a child, God gives you the right, the privilege that, he, that belongs to him. And this morning, I just want to encourage us to tell us that we do have the privilege of a son and not of a slave. We are no longer slaves. We are sons in God's house. So what is the nature of this love of the father? Firstly, the nature of the love of the father is a selfless love. Secondly, the father's love is a reckless love. Thirdly, the father's love restores back into fellowship with him. You can once again begin to enjoy the privilege in God's house. 2 Corinthians 5.18 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. He has given us the ministry of reconciliation that we may reconcile others also into the family of God. And fourthly, finally, the love of the Father seeks intimacy. The love of the Father seeks intimacy. Without too much of delay, the Father in this story throws out a party just for the fact that his son was once lost but now found. The son being found was so important to the father. And that intimate connection and embrace was so important to the father that he was, he was willing to throw out a party to slaughter the fattened calf in the house. Look at verse 24 in chapter 15 and verse 32. It repeats the same thing twice in this chapter. For this son of mine was dead and he's alive again. He was lost and is found. Once again, it says, So they began to celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. This celebration had to do with intimacy. I believe that the father did not just want to leave the son aside and just go and do something else. He was so close and embracing the son and all the while embracing and enjoying the intimacy that he had with his son. That is the Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father seeks intimacy with, with us. And that is the very reason this father in the story 
goes to his eldest son who is shouting outside and angry. He says, son, don't be like that. Come, let us go in and celebrate because it's time now to put things right. It is time now for intimacy because we are no longer talking about what has gone, what has been done. Now it's time to have good father-son fellowship. Romans 8, 15 to 17 says, The spirit you have received does not make you slaves, so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. Indeed, we, are, we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. Co-heirs, participating together in intimate sharing. And uh, this specific word is used here that we sometimes use in our prayer times when we speak to the Heavenly Father, the word Abba Father. It is not yet another word, a, a Hebrew word in referring to the father. In fact, the word Abba is an Aramaic word, not even a Hebrew word. It is not just another name for the father. This word is specifically mentioned three times in the New Testament. All three times the word is used in a particular way in its context. And one of those times where the word is used is in Mark chapter 14, verse 36. Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane. And he's going through all his agony before the cross. And at that moment, he cries out, Abba, Father. And he says, if it is possible, take this cross away from me. But... I will still obey. I will still do what you want me to do. That's the meaning of the word Abba. Abba Father means we say, Father, I am willing to obey you, my loving Father. I am willing to obey you, my loving Father. The response of these two sons in the story is not revealed to us in the scriptures. The scriptures does not tell us how these two sons responded to the father's love. In the same way, it has been kept open. It has been kept open before us, expecting us to respond back to God's love. In the same way that this verse suggests to us, yes, loving heavenly father, I am willing to obey you and do your will. It may be hard, but still, yes, Father, I am willing to obey you and do your will. With that understanding of Abba Father, we must realize that we are no longer slaves. We have the privilege of sons. We are no longer slaves. He will only accept us as sons. And as sons, our response should be, yes, Heavenly Father, as much as we seek your intimacy, we are willing to obey you fully and to do as you please. Yes, we have gone in our own ways and we have done our own things. We have had the wrong attitudes at times and we have criticized you. But now, Heavenly Father, we are willing to repent and we are willing to just obey you and do your will. The love of the Father seeks intimacy. He is looking forward to celebrate together with us. Many of us, we have lost intimacy. In our earthly families, we have lost our intimacy. One reason for losing our intimacy is because our intimacy with the Heavenly Father is lost. Remember, He is the source of love. He is the source of our love. It is His love that helps us to love 
others in return. It is His love flowing through us that can become so intimate, so celebrative of the sonship and its privileges. Today, the Lord wants not only to restore you back into fellowship with Him, He also wants to celebrate with you. He wants to have good fellowship with you. What will be your response? Will you say, yes, Heavenly Father, I will continue to obey you? Yes, Abba Father, I will continue to obey you. Will that be your response? If that be your response today, the Heavenly Father's arms, arms are stretched to receive you, to embrace you, and to enter into that intimacy together with you. Do not delay, I would say. Some of you listening to me, you have put this off. You have gone so far away. Now you feel so guilty. You feel ashamed. You feel there is nothing more. You feel that you have, uh, you have, you have, you have lost it altogether. But I just want to let you know that you have not lost it altogether. Because the Heavenly Father still is concerned about you. He not only wants to restore you back into fellowship, He also wants to have intimacy and an intimate fellowship with you. So that you will no longer be a slave, but a son. You will no longer have the mentality of a slave, even though sometimes you are a church goer. You will no longer have the mentality of a slave, but you will now have the mentality of a son who's willing to take full control of the privileges that has been given to you because of that unconditional love of the Father in heaven. At this time, I want to very specially pray for you. For those of you who are really hurting because of what your earthly father has done to you. They have disappointed you so much and sometimes they have hurt you so bad. And this day, as you listen to my words, the heavenly father, who is not like that, he is not like the earthly fathers whom we know. He is so reckless enough that he will be willing to spend anything to the very last to reach out to us and to restore us back into fellowship. The Lord wants to heal you, friend. The Lord wants to touch your heart. He wants to heal those wounds that are caused by your father and sometimes maybe your mother as well. And the Lord wants to touch you at this very moment, even as you listen to my words. If you are that person, I would invite you to just bow your head and say, Lord, I just come to you. The pain is so great. What I have lost because as a result of my earthly father is so great. I cannot still come into terms with it. But the Lord is saying, I will heal you. You are no longer a slave, but a son. Because I, your heavenly father, love you and want to embrace you so that you may experience the warmth of my love. Heavenly fathers, heavenly, uh, earthly fathers, sometimes probably you failed in your area of responsibility. You failed to discharge that reckless love, the unconditional love, the agape love towards your family, your children. Probably you failed so bad that uh, you don't know how to make, this, make things up. But I just want you to know you are wired to be able to reach out with that same love. But you need to have a touch from above. You need to have a touch from above, from the Heavenly Father Himself, that His love through you will reach out to your family. If you are that Father, I want you also to bow your head and prepare so that I will pray for you that the Lord will touch you and discharge his love into your heart as well. There are others of you who have grieved your father. You have squandered his wealth and sometimes even hurt him so bad. And uh, you have hurt him and his good name was just, uh, you know, put to shame. But today, 
the Lord is willing to forgive us if we are willing to come back. Like that prodigal son who lifted his head up to heaven and said, I have sinned against God, I have sinned against my father. I will go back to my father and ask him to accept me just as a slave. As I said, the Lord is willing to accept you not just as a slave, but as his own, as his own son your and his daughter. He is willing to once again forgive you and give you the grace to be that obedient child. And the others, if your response to the father is, Father, I have been in the house, but I have lived as a slave. I have been complaining as a slave. I have been very judgmental as a slave. I have been pointing my finger at even the father as a slave. But I sincerely repent of my sin. And I come before you and I say, Abba, Father, my heavenly Father, I am willing to obey you and submit to your will. I am willing to be a son in your house and no longer a slave. If you are that person as well, I would like to pray for you at this very moment. Bow with me as I pray and commit you to the Lord. Because I believe as you join with me in this prayer, the Lord will restore you back. And His unconditional love will touch you wherever you are and minister to you in such a powerful way that your life will be no longer the same. You will be such a transformed person. You will be a son in the house and no longer a slave. Let us pray. Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we want to thank you because your love has been so reckless and you have reached out to us despite of who we are and wherever we have been. Father, you came in search of us and you reached out to us and you loved us when we did not deserve it. And Father, today that is the very reason we can come back to you and seek your mercy because we know that we don't deserve it, but you are still willing to give us another chance. Father, at this very moment, I pray for those who are suffering because of what their earthly fathers have done and their perspective of a father has changed since. Father, I pray that you will just change that by healing their wounds deep within. I pray that you will reach out to such individuals at this very moment and you will heal those inner wounds and instead you will replace it with your unconditional agape love, the love of the Father in heaven, that they will now begin to see something totally change and transform in their lives from this moment onwards. Father, I pray for those fathers who have failed in their responsibility. Father, they have done so much of things that have really hurt their family, their children, their wives. And Father, I pray that you will just reach out to them as well. That you will give them your agape love, the power of your agape love, to love with that same kind of love. So that they can restore back their relationships. They can restore their families in alignment with you. And they can enjoy the full privilege that is available for them in God's house. I pray that you will reach out to them as well at this moment. I also pray, Lord, that you will reach out with your love in such a way that we will no longer act or live like slaves, that we will li really live as a child of God. We will really live in intimacy with you. We will really respond back to you by saying, yes, our Father, we are willing to do your will and to obey you in all that we do. Father, if someone is praying at this very moment in that manner, I pray that you will reach out to them and that you will give them your agape love and they will have the courage to respond back to you and say, yes, Father, I will certainly obey you and do your will. To that extent, we just commit every single one of them at this moment. I want to thank you once again for your unconditional love, that transforming love of the Heavenly Father. We want to thank you and we commit ourselves to you today in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, we ask and pray. Amen. Amen. 
May the Lord bless you. Experience the unconditional agape love of the Heavenly Father. And I hope you will respond back to Him by saying, Abba Father, I will obey you and do as you please. God bless you. All right. Uh, I want to say thank you for everyone who joined us uh, for the online service. Um, don't forget to uh, join next week as well. Um, take care. May God bless you.